Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a piping hot exclusive concerning Becca Cosmetics being sued by Morphe for trademark infringement. I say it's an exclusive since yours truly purchased some of the legal documents and I will be showing you how all the shit show that is the vault collection really went down. This begs the question, was this vault collection really pulled due to a pressing issue and inconsistent batches? Well, get your mugs out because this is going to be full of piping hot tea. But as with all my videos, let's go back to the very beginning when the vault was first announced and work our way back towards today. On April 23rd, Jacqueline Hill teases she was working on something new. She posted a photo of herself on Instagram with the caption for the product on her eyes is coming soon. Then on June 1st, she posted these snaps to show off even more of the colors. seeing the photo on Jacqueline Hall's Instagram and those snaps of the swatches, many people, including myself, assumed it was for her cosmetics company that she was supposed to start back in 2017. Well, time goes by and all of her fans' anticipation was at an all-time high, only to have said anticipation quickly turn to disappointment when she announced on her Instagram that she was collaborating with Morphe yet again. Anyway, this collab is called The Vault and it consists of four 10-pan eyeshadow palettes supposedly containing colors that did not make it to the original Morphe Jacqueline Hill palette that was released last year. The Vault palettes retailed for $15 each or $49 for the entire vault. This was also supposed to launch on June 26th. Shortly thereafter, the Vault PR was sent out to the gurus for them to show their codes, oops, I mean honestly review for their subscribers. However, shortly after the fact, many people began noticing the blatantly obvious similarities between the artwork for the Vault and the champagne pop collection Jacqueline Hill did with Becca Cosmetics a few years ago. Suspiciously timed, many influencers posted their reviews on YouTube criticizing the Vault collection. On June 21st, Morphe announced via their social media that they were postponing the vault launch until a later date. The post reads, Morphe is 100% committed to giving our Morphe babes high quality products that we are all proud to use. With the help of our loyal community, we found that some of the shades in the Morphe Jaclyn Hill vault palettes didn't meet our standards due to inconsistent production. So our team and Jaclyn have made the decision to delay the official launch. We will let you know the new launch date as soon as possible. Thank you so much for your love and support, Morphe babes. A lot of people might Myself included initially praised Morphe for addressing the issue and taking it head on and seeming like they cave a shit. However, as more time went on, suspicion aroused. Many people felt that Becca Cosmetics served them with a cease and desist and it wasn't pulled due to the batch issue, but rather it was pulled due to them having to change the artwork in compliance with a possible lawsuit. Jacqueline Hull even announced on Snapchat that there was a pressing issue and that the palettes were being postponed. Hey guys, I just wanted to jump on here really quick. I'm sure a lot of you have seen the post that Morphe made on their Instagram, but in case you haven't, I just wanted to inform you that the vault collection that I developed with Morphe, the launch of it is going to be postponed. So long story short, because it's, I'm actually so grateful for this, you guys, like you have no idea how happy I am and grateful that the collection has not launched yet and has not been sold to hundreds and thousands of people or however many people would end up buying this so thankful um but we ended up finding out because of the social media beauty influencers that were getting reviews on youtube and on instagram that there was an inconsistency in our product and i'm so grateful for the social media influencers who got a bad batch and were so brutally honest because i saw it with my own eyes watching these reviews i was like that is not what i created so we ended up getting to the bottom of it and we are fixing it and making it right. And for those of you who went to Vegas and purchased it, contact Morphe. They have a special gift for you guys and they are going to be, of course, giving you a brand new... Sorry, my last snap kind of cut me off. But yes, of course, anybody who purchased the original vault and you got a bad one, contact Morphe. They will send you a brand new one that is perfectly formulated. And I'm overjoyed to see the comments so far on Morphe's Instagram post of you guys respecting this and appreciating it because I am so damn grateful to be working with a brand who the second we found this out, they're like, nope, pull it because 
they take my formula that I created with them just as serious as me and they want you to have the absolute best formula possible absolutely possible for the best price possible and I'm so thankful so I'm actually very thankful for this thank you again to all the influencers who were honest about their palette and it not being good I really appreciate it. you guys are the best and so thankful for that so thankful that it hasn't launched yet so we're gonna make it right and it will be coming very soon. Well, I have my own theories on these supposed bad reviews, but I'll save all of that for later on. A month after the vault collection was postponed, Morphe announced the new launch date, which was August 14th, in this post, which reads, Breaking news, the wait is over. Morphe x Jaclyn Hill, the vault is dropping on August 14th. Thanks again to our loyal community for your valuable feedback. We're so excited to bring you the super pigmented, seriously creamy, undeniably blendable shades that you've come to expect. Because you deserve the best. P.S. Happy birthday, Jaclyn Hill. Everyone go show this beauty some birthday love from the Morphe fam, Morphe x Jaclyn Hill. The influencers are received the original vault collection PR also received the new versions. Some even did comparisons between the two. A few influencers noticed that there was no difference between the two vaults. And many people took to Morphe's Instagram to blow it up with negative feedback. Was this all publicity stunt to make it look like Morphe gave a shit about their customers and the quality of their products? Or was it pulled to avoid the embarrassment of announcing that they were in a legal dispute with Becca Cosmetics where they would more or less be admitting to stealing their artwork? Yesterday I was speaking with the beauty blogger Zadi doll who is also a sleuth that investigates current events in the beauty community. She watches Morphe like a hawk since they're a shady company because they duped the public into thinking that their brushes and palettes were what the professionals use but at an affordable price among other shady things. Hey, I mean 35 eyeshadow palettes that retail for $23 when it literally costs Morphe pennies per palette to have produced. Can't beat those prices, huh? Anyway, she noticed something off-putting about the palettes, which is the smoking gun, to prove that there is literally no fucking difference between the palettes and the batches are literally the goddamn same. She wrote to Morphe asking them to release the batch numbers. If you want to read more about her, the batches and her findings, I will link you to her blog post below. I don't want to use her entire post in my video, so definitely go check her out. As for Zaddy Doll's correspondence with Morphe, here it goes. Can we please put the palette situation to rest by releasing the batch codes from the first run to what it's supposed to be version 2. I love to publish these codes so people know that if they're buying it, Alta is the first one that was supposed to be pulled or the second run. I know some new palettes are marked V2 but have the same batch code as the first run while some marked with V2 have a different batch code. It would just be easier if I can have the batch code listing with the manufacturing dates to let people know. Morphe eventually wrote her back saying, Hello, thank you for your email. Unfortunately, we are unable to provide the list of the batch number, but we will be more than happy to confirm the palette you have received. If you would like, you may provide a photo of the back of your palette. After contacting Alta, they have verified you may return the palette for an exchange slash refund if you are no longer wanting to keep the palette. Kind regards, Morphe. I mean, hey, if they're innocent and truly pull these palettes due to inconsistent batches, what's the harm of providing this info? Anyways, Adido looked up their import record and noticed something rather troubling. The import records for the vault palettes under one of their numerous shell corporations were done on May 2nd, 22nd, 27th, and the 31st. The pressing issue was not brought up until the end of June, right before the original launch date. She said on this blog post that she thinks Becca possibly served Morphe with a cease and desist. After reading this article a few times and making sure my eyes weren't deceiving me with these batch codes, I decided to do some digging and came across some information confirming that they are, in fact, in litigation. The only thing weird about this is that it's the other way around in that Morphe are suing Becca for their champagne pop artwork claiming that Becca committed trademark infringement which violated their trademark. Before I read the document I wanted to apologize in advance for the watermarks. They're in place due to the fact that a certain rotten fruit recently decided to lift receipts from one of my recent videos and stole from other channels as well so if he wants these documents he could pull out his own damn credit card and pay for them like I did. Anyway the cease and desist from Becca reads, Dear Mr. McCormick we are writing on behalf of our client Becca Incorporated regarding your misconduct constituting false designation of origin, palming off, and trade dress infringement by Morphe Incorporated and Jaclyn Hill as well as tortious interference with Miss Hill's March 30, 2017 agreement with Becca, of which we are certain Morphe Incorporated is aware since we cannot imagine Morphe would have entered into a relationship with Miss Hill without knowing the limitations imposed by the agreement. As Miss Hill has made clear on social media and elsewhere, and as you have made clear on Morphe's website, Miss Hill and Morphe are planning to release the vault palettes on August 14, 2018. These palettes slavishly copy the packaging, exterior design, and other trade 
address of the Becca Champagne Pop Palettes. A copy of the vault packaging and the Champagne Pop packaging is attached here too. The infringing packaging was intentionally designed by Miss Helen Morphy to trade on Becca's substantial goodwill and its Champagne Pop Palettes and to cause consumers to be confused as to Becca's affiliation with or sponsorship of the vault products. Indeed, numerous social media sites and influencers have already commented on the confusing similarity of the packaging. In light of Becca's extensive use of the packaging in the Champagne Pop product, consumers associate that packaging and the products of which it is used exclusively with Becca. As a result, Becca have developed substantial intellectual property rights and goodwill in that packaging and it is a valuable asset that is important to the continued success of the business. Because the foregoing willful misconduct is likely to cause confusion, mistake, and deception among purchasers as to the approval and or sponsorship of the vault products by Becca, and is likely to deceive the public into believing that the products being sold, offered for sale, supplied and are manufactured by Miss Hill and or Morphe originate from, are associated with, or otherwise authorized by Becca. Your misconduct constitutes false designation of origin and unfair competition in violation of federal and state law, including but not limited to common law trade dress infringement and subject you to treble damages, disgorgement of your profits, and attorney's fees. In addition, please take notice to the foregoing misconduct tortiously interferes with Miss Hill's obligations under the agreement if, as we believe to be the case, you are aware of the agreement and we will hold you fully responsible for your tortious interference and seek all remedies available under the law. For all of those reasons, we hereby demand that you immediately cease and desist from using the infringing packaging delivered to us for destruction of all infringing packaging. Recall all product using infringing packaging from customers. Cease and desist from advertising, including on social media products using the infringing packaging. We look forward to your prompt response with this letter. While we do not wish to engage in a legal confrontation, we would prefer to resolve this swiftly and formally. Becca will take all steps necessary to protect its rights. To that end, please be advised that you have an obligation to preserve and not destroy even inadvertently all documents, including electronically stored information relating to this matter. Nothing in this letter shall be considered a waiver of any claims, defenses, rights, or arguments that Becca may possess at law or in equity, all of which were expressly reserved herein. So yes, it's true, Becca issued a cease and desist to Morphe. And also I noticed that Jacqueline Hill violated her agreement with Becca concerning the artwork and Morphe interfered with that contract between Becca and Jacqueline Hill. Concerning the champagne pop artwork, I decided to look it up to see if it was in fact trademarked by Becca still. However, all I could find was that the word mark was trademark, which is different than a standard trademark and a trademark that covers logos, artwork, etc. Word marks are only for words that distinguish a company's products in the market. The artwork has not been used by Becca in quite some time, so they wouldn't be able to trademark it now even if they wanted to, and Morphe are making sure that they can no longer use it in general. Instead of doing the honorable thing and changing the artwork, Morphe not only proceeded with the launch date, but they also went ahead and filed a lawsuit against Becca on August 2nd. Pretty shady, right? Well, before you answer that question, just know that Morphe wasn't the only one that pulled shady stunts, because if you might remember back in January 2017, Becca re-released a Prosecco Pop face palette collaboration that they originally had with Jacqueline Hill. As you can see, this was all done behind Jacqueline Hill's back, and these comments left on Trend Mood's January 18, 2017 announcement for the palette here. Wow, this is news to me. Is this for real? At Becca Cosmetics. I'm literally in shock right now. I had absolutely no idea. No, my name won't be on it. I didn't know that this was happening. They did it without telling me. This wasn't the first incident she had with Becca, however. Back in 2016, they collaborated for the aforementioned Champagne Pop collection. Becca cut corners with the eyeshadow palette and it was cheaply produced. It is alleged that Jaclyn Hill was well aware of all the manufacturing details as she initially claimed that she was involved with the palette entirely and that it was her baby. Once fans called out Becca and Jaclyn Hill on their BS when they noticed the eyeshadow palettes were of poor quality, Jaclyn went on Snapchat and claimed that she was only involved with one of the eyeshadows and that she had no idea that the palettes were manufactured elsewhere. She announced that the palettes would be pulled since she didn't want her name on a low quality product. Unfortunately, the Snapchat of Jacqueline claiming she was 100% involved with the Champagne Pop eyeshadow palette has been completely wiped off the internet. However, you can watch her apology Snapchat here as a refresher. Straight to the point because I want to address something that I am so stressed about and I'm so happy to be here and finally talk to you guys about this. I have been seeing all the comments, not all of them of course, but I've been seeing comments and the negative reviews about the Champagne Collection eyeshadow palette and I want to talk about that. First off, I just want to say that I completely agree with you guys.
guys. The reason I have not been responding is because me and Becca have been in communication trying to figure out what to do about this. The eyeshadow palette is getting a ton of negative reviews saying that it's dry, it's patchy, it's not Becca's original beautiful formula that everyone loves so much. And I completely agree with you guys. So I'm going to start from the beginning and give you a little story to like bring you up to speed so that you know exactly what happened so that you don't have any questions or you're not like confused in any way. So when Becca and I, you know, had the conversation of the summer of 2016 champagne collection, I immediately was all about the face palette. That was my baby, my heart and soul. I've been so hands-on with that palette. I take so much pride in that palette. Now keep in mind that I don't get to touch formulas because it's half Jacqueline, half Becca, but I get to do shades. Becca came to me and said, we want to do an eyeshadow palette. And I said, no, 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 we can't, we can't. I have so much going on. I'm working so hard on this collaboration as it is with the face palette. I have so much going on in my personal life. And they were like, no, no, no. What we want to do is we want to create an eyeshadow palette, Becca formulas, Becca colors, and we just want you to create one shade that represents champagne pop. I was like, okay, yes, love it, die. Like, it sounds like such a great plan, you know? And that's what I've told you guys already is how it's Becca's palette, Becca's formulations, but I got to create champagne toast. I was assured that it was going to be the same formula as all of their other palettes. You guys know I love their Ombre Rouge palette. If you look at the reviews, their palettes have amazing reviews. Everyone loves them. So I was totally down. You know, of course. Great shadow palette. You guys create it. I'll create the actual shade of Champagne Toast. Let's do it. So that's how that palette went down. Because there was a time crunch and they had to launch this palette with the whole collection, you know, everything we were working on had to come out at the same time, right? So they sent this palette to a different lab. They were told that this lab could produce the same exact, you know, beautiful, creamy, high pigmented shades and shadows that they were always used to, so they trusted that. I was not aware of the situation because I was not as hands-on with this palette. I was just responsible for the shade of Champagne Toast, but I was just told that it was going to be Becca Formulas, and that's that. That doesn't matter. Becca's an amazing brand. They know what they're doing. They've used several labs in the past, and they, they were told this one was going to be amazing. They trusted it, and now here we are. Oh, the point that I'm getting at is some people have been loving this palette. I've seen a lot of great reviews. I've seen a lot of people tag me in beautiful photos of their eye makeup saying that they love this palette so much. There's also a ton of bad feedback. And I don't even want to say it's like negativity or hate because it's just people saying, calling out the obvious. These aren't Becca shadows. They're dry. They're patchy. They're different. What's going on? And I'm just here to let you know exactly what's going on. Becca is a great company with great intentions. They did not try to do anybody dirty. They didn't try to hurt me or hurt you. But this is now where we are at, and I now have my name on an eyeshadow palette that I do not believe in. And I have promised you guys many, many, many times that I would never put my name on something that I don't believe in. I was told it was going to be just the regular formulas. It wasn't. So because of that, we are going to be eliminating the Champagne Collection eyeshadow palette all together. Now, Becca did not have to do this because of the fact that this technically isn't my palette, it's theirs. Because, like I've said a million times, this technically is not my palette. It's Becca's palette, and I was just responsible for one color out of the five. So they really didn't have to respect my wishes. But they see my frustration. They see my subscribers' frustration. And I promised you guys that I would never put my name on something that isn't amazing, and this palette is not what I thought it was going to be. So therefore, it is no longer going to be available on June 16th when it goes into stores. The eyeshadow palette will not be available. The face palette will be, and champagne pop liquid. Becca feels absolutely terrible and just heartbroken by this entire situation because they thought that these were going to be absolutely amazing, and the deadline hit so quick. Uh, all of a sudden, it was just like, oh, boom, the eyeshadow palette is launched. Oh, boom, why are they different? Oh, boom, look at all this negativity. And it was just like, it's just been a bad situation. But Becca and Sephora are doing their absolute best to try to make this into a good situation. They have promised that anyone who is dissatisfied with this palette can get a full refund, no problem. They told me that they are planning ways of making this up to you guys because they feel so sorry because your trust in their eyeshadow and their product means the world to them, obviously. And as far as me and my relationship with my subscribers go, I hope you know and I hope this proves to you that you are always my number one. Not money, not makeup. I'm sure I could have made money off of this palette. You know, good money, I'm sure, but I could care less. I would pay someone to take this palette away. This, We hear you guys. I'm so thankful for you guys stepping up and being so honest. You guys are always honest with me, and I'm honest with you, and I, you have no idea how thankful I am for that. And honestly, I am just so, I continue to be impressed 
I, Becca, as a company, and the fact that they are eliminating this palette. They could have just said, like, Jacqueline, screw you, we're keeping this, you're only responsible for one shade, we're going to make money. But instead, they listen to me, and they listen to you guys. You guys are the ones that they really listen to. Like, I say it all the time, like, I'm nobody without you guys. Like, it's amazing. There's honestly, you guys, not that many brands out there and just not many people in business in general that would do the right thing. And the fact that Becca sees this and is trying to fix it is amazing. And I just hope that you guys know that my loyalty is always to you. I'm not trying to knock anybody. Becca knows I love them and I'm so grateful and honored by this collaboration. But at the same time, they also know my loyalty is to you. You're my number one and you truly only deserve the best. That's why this palette will no longer be a If you aren't happy with it, please go get a refund, girl. Please. Becca is lessons just like I am, just like we all are, every day of our lives, there's always a lesson to be learned, and they will never do this again. This will never happen for us. As for my thoughts on the bad reviews in this whole situation in general, I think Morphe encouraged the influencers on the PR list to criticize it so they could pull the collection and make it look like they give a shit about the consumer so they can cover up the underlying reason. I also think this all stems from the fact that Becca bore the financial burden when the eyeshadow palettes were recalled in 2016 because, as you remember, Jacqueline Hill was already paid. Yes, Becca were petty to re-release the Prosecco Pop face palette without notifying Jacqueline Hill. However, what Jacqueline Hill and Morphe are doing is even shadier to suit Becca just so they can use their champagne pop artwork. As always, I will keep you up to date on the tea concerning this lawsuit. What do you think about all this? Let me know down below and I'll see you all soon.